David Howard is one of the most respected and admired ballet instructors working in the world today. Born in London, England on June 14, 1937, he was the first and only child to parents Walter and Dorothy Mabel. He began his dance training at a very young age and at 10 received a scholarship to the Cone Ripman School, later to become Arts Educational School. He studied ballet, tap, modern, musical comedy, and Greek dancing. He won the Adeline Genet Medal in 1954, which is the highest award given by the Royal Academy of Dance. Having learned so many different forms of dance came in handy when in 1955 he left school to work at the London Palladium for a variety series. He worked with such stars as Julie Andrews, Howard Keel, Rosemary Clooney, and Debbie Reynolds. One of his favorite memories was doing a show called Night of 100 Stars that featured Mylena Dietrich and Sophie Tucker. It was this stage experience that would later impact David's career as a teacher. He left the Palladium and joined the Sadler's Wells Ballet that later became the renowned Royal Ballet. He performed as a soloist and was with the company for seven years. I first met David, probably it was 1958 or 59, and we were dancing together in the Spanish dance in Swan Lake, in the third act of Swan Lake. And of course, it's a very long time ago, so it's rather hard to remember everything. But David, immediately, I knew that this was a very, very musical dancer. You know? And he was wonderful to dance with because he had so much vitality and life. He's very generous in, in the fact that all that he's amassed in his life, all his experience, he is able to and willing to pass on to the next generation. After dancing many roles with the Royal Ballet, he left to dance with the National Ballet of Canada, only to return to Europe to dance with a group called the Bluebells. After which, he danced in a musical called Little Me, directed by Bob Fosse. After an injury, David started teaching tap at his old dancing school and took over the ballet class one day when the instructor never showed up for class. It was soon after that David received a call from New York City from heiress Rebecca Harkness. She was starting a ballet school and looking for trained dancers to bring to New York to train them to teach. David planned to stay for two years and bring back to England as much knowledge as possible. He never did return and stayed at Harkness for 11 years. I first met David way back in the late 60s, early 70s at the Harkness House for Ballet Arts and I was working with the second company and he was ballet master for the first company and would just very occasionally come in and give classes, uh, partnering classes and regular classes. And it was just always a treat to have him because uh, everybody got very warmed up with him. We didn't usually have David Howard back then. Uh, for those of you that have never seen David teach, um, the, most, the most majestic part of his teaching is the use of his voice, which even now when he sometimes doesn't move around as much, his voice just kind of fills up the room. But in the earlier days when he was teach, uh, moving around a lot and his way of correcting was very unusual. He seemed to know exactly where to touch a dancer that would make your body relax yet stretch at the same time. And I, I remember he came over to me and once I think he put his thumb in my forehead and I just felt all my wrinkles disappear and I felt like I was growing taller and longer and leaner and it was just that little bit of touch that he was able to give, very gentle all the time. His role in the teaching community and how generous David's been to the teaching community for many, many years. When you ask him how, some, you ask me, or I'm sure many of the other teachers, how he's impacted me, I think with a lot of other teachers, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to get as many people who are active in the community teaching that have been influenced. But he's so generous about his work. He allows people like me to benefit from him for 30 years. And that kind of generosity is one of the things that makes him a great teacher. David's work is inspiring. Uh, his personal interest in each and every person that he works with, the detail he's willing to spend time on. Uh, certainly he knows everything uh, about the physicality of the body and how it's going to function and the limitations and whatever. But it's, it's mostly that inspiration and that he loves the dance so very much and wants people to reach 
so far. So he's inspiring not only the, to the dancer, but to other people that teach like myself now again. After his years at Harkness, David opened his own school in 1977. He taught a range of students, from the adult beginner to such stars as Gelsey Kirkland, Barishnikov, Cynthia Harvey, Nuriev, and Makarova, just to name a few. Makarova, like many others, became a close personal friend. David fondly remembers a kitten that Makarova had given to him once as a gift. He named the cat Flory. David told me this really funny story one time about uh, Gelsey Kirkland. She was doing Don Quixote at the Paris Opera and she was off her leg and she got very worried and so she ran back, well, she was backstage, she went to the stage manager's booth, grabbed the phone, called David when he, she was in Paris to him being in New York and said, I'm off my leg, how do I do my fautes? And David over the phone gave her several corrections of what to do and uh, she said thanks, hung up the phone, bam, did her fautes, perfect as ever. And you know, I mean, that, that, it, that shows you the level of dedication that David has to his art form, his friends, his students, uh, you know, and that's why I think people are so loyal to David, is because he's such a great guy in that way, and he, and he is so loyal. While at his studio, David formed the David Howard Foundation. One of the criteria was to sponsor young dancers to further their dance education. David closed his studio in 1995, but continues to teach in New York at Steps, Broadway Dance Center, and the New School University as well as his popular teacher's training courses known worldwide. My experience with David's teacher training began in about 1993. He called me out of the clear blue sky to come down to Venezuela and talk to some teachers. And I thought I was going to be doing a lot of playing, but I ended up doing a lot of talking. And they became more and more part of his teacher training seminar because David feels that music is so important in how he approaches the class and how a class should be taught. So I look at him as more of a musician who teaches dance. After working with David for so many years, I find that I see dancers differently. I find that when I play for his class, my challenge is finding the musicality in his exercise. Because David has a tune in his head all the time. And he has a tune in his head when he gives the exercise. I get to find out what that tune is and, and decipher it and hopefully in help the dancers interpret it with their bodies. That's what makes playing for David's class just so incredible. His class flows from beginning to end. Uh, it's, it's all about his giving. Very little of it is about him. And his teaching is a very generous teaching, keeping us moving with wonderful flowing uh, movement at the bar. And then his petite allegro is world famous. And we all love to do it. We loved to do it when we were younger and now as we get older, it's, I think it should be copyrighted as an anti-Alzheimer's uh, treatment because it really keeps the mind and the body working. And David shows you how you can always, always work and get something. And he shows in the way he loves teaching, how teaching is such a wonderful profession. In a word, I would say about David that he is the greatest teacher there is. He is Mr. Rhythm and Mr. Musicality. This one's for you, David.